Some of you may remember this wooden box that I made a while ago. It has a hidden hinge, and since I made it, I've been thinking about remaking it, but out of brass. I've worked out the dimensions, and as well as using brass, I'll also use some stainless steel for the ends of the box, and that will give the joints that hold it together more contrast. That's all six pieces I need, a top and bottom, two sides and two ends. I'll start by squaring them up and trimming the sides and end pieces to size. I've had the Miller machine for a year or two now and I'm still far from knowing what I'm really doing, but I am gaining experience all the time and I reckon this is a great little project to practice on. I also absolutely love using it and I think that's mainly because I'm learning something new each time I use it. Next I'll join the pieces and I'll do that with dovetail joints. I don't have a dovetail milling cutter small enough but because it's only brass I think this router bit should do the job. I'm using the 90 degree corners on two angle blocks to square up the side pieces and as they're sticking up a bit it won't hurt to put a couple of clamps on. I'll remove some of the waste from in between the dovetails with an end mill and that will lighten the load of the router bit. I don't have a collet that will hold a half inch shank router bit so I'll have to use a drill chuck instead. I know it's not ideal but it'll have to do. I have ordered a collet for future use though. I went very slowly but it worked on the brass, no worries at all. That's one end done and they look great so next I'll quickly do the other end. Now that the tails are cut on the sides, I'll mark out and cut the pins of the dovetails onto the stainless steel end pieces. The main reason for making this project and video now is the kayak I'm working on is taking a while and I need to get a video out. Making a metalwork video means I can leave the kayak set up in the woodworking shop ready to get back to and by the way, the kayak is coming along nicely. I'm milling away most of the waste, but then I'll finish it by hand using files. I could have angled my vise and finished the cuts on the milling machine, but I'd rather leave it squared and trammed with the machine, and I like to add some filing into my projects anyway. To help with the filing and keep things accurate, I'll use a file guide. There isn't much to take off and it takes no time at all to fit the joints. The file guide really does make things easy as I only have to worry about the file cutting in the one direction. The joints need to be decent but they don't need to be perfect as they'll get pinned together later on and any gaps will get closed up. That's one done, now for the rest of them. Next I'll fit the bottom and to do that I'll mill a groove around the inside faces. The brass I'm using is an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimetres and the end mill used for the groove was 3 millimetres so next I'll take a touch off the bottom piece and I'll do that using my homemade fly cutter.
Next I'll trim it down to size to fit into the box. The grooves don't extend quite far enough into the corners of the box so I'll file the corners off the bottom piece to allow for it. It's looking pretty good so next I'll fit the lid starting with a hinge and for that I'm using quarter inch brass rod. The barrel of the hinge needs to be 6mm in diameter and that's to match the ball end mill that I'll be using on the box. I'll use that to make a groove for the hinge barrel to fit into. For the hidden hinge to look good and to look hidden, these pieces need to be pretty accurate. The hinge should work well enough whatever, but the more accurate the better it will be. For the hinge pin I'm drilling a 16th inch through hole and I'm going pretty slowly to avoid breaking it. That's one done, now I need another four. I'm using two different sizes which will look better and more interesting than them all being the same size. Next I'll trim them to the correct length by taking a measurement then trimming off what I need to and I'll do that with a collet chuck and I would have made these pieces from the start with a collet chuck but I didn't have a quarter inch collet to hold the brass rod so I ordered one of those as well. They came out pretty good and they should work well. Now I'll mill the top of the back piece for the barrel pieces to fit into. First I need to mill the back piece down a touch to compensate for the extra height that the hinge will add. Next I'll cut a round groove to the underside of the lid but first I'll face that off with the fly cutter. You may have noticed that the ends are too high, I left extra on to grind those back later on and that's fitting together well so next I can solder the hinge. The two longer pieces will get soldered to the back and the shorter ones to the lid so I'm applying flux where I want the solder to flow. I did a couple of small test pieces before starting the project, they weren't perfect but fingers crossed this works out. I was struggling to get enough heat into it so I grabbed another torch. That really isn't going so well but let's see if it's good enough. A couple of the pieces stayed where they should have but some didn't and a couple of them got soldered together. Anyway, looks like I need to give it another go. I'll remake the barrel pieces but I'll try and salvage this piece by machining this one off and cleaning it up and the lid is easy enough to remake so I'll make a new one of those. I think the mass of the box was sucking the heat out of it so this time I'll try laying out just the lid and the back piece and I'll also use an oxygen and map gas torch for a hotter flame and better control. I'm putting heat into the whole piece first and then into the barrel next. I was a bit careless there and slightly melted one of the dovetails but hopefully it will be okay. That seemed much better but there's still a problem. The barrel pieces look like they soldered okay but the lid and the back piece got soldered together. I'll try and release them with the Dremel and if that doesn't work I'll have to try again. I 
I really didn't expect that to work, but it looks pretty good. The only problem I may have is the groove from the Dremel will need grinding out, and there isn't much material to play with, but I'm going to press on and see how it goes. For the hinge pin, I'll use a piece of TIG wire. That works great, so now I can start assembling the box, but first I need to fix the melted dovetail. There's still a bit of a gap there, but hopefully there's enough material to pin and fill up the void. Before I do pin the joints, I need to file a small section from the straight sides of the dovetail pins. I'll file an angled undercut so when the joint is pinned, it will lock the pieces together with no way of them coming apart. It's also a pretty neat effect as the joint looks impossible with a tail on adjacent faces. One last thing before it's assembled is to sand all of the inside faces as that's much easier to do now. I'm peening from the centre of the dovetails, pushing the material out towards the edges and filling up the voids. I'm careful not to hit the edges as there's a good chance they'll crack. The melted one is a bit more of a challenge. I moved the material around as best as I could. It wasn't perfect, but it mostly filled in the void. I also peened the stainless steel pins a little to help lock everything together. That looks great, next I'll take it to the belt grinder and clean up all the faces including the hinge barrel which gets ground down to become part of the back face. I probably should have put a new belt on but I didn't want to grind too fast and grind too far too quickly. I need to be careful not to grind into the barrel too far and expose the hinge pin. If I did that it would be pretty disastrous and it wouldn't be easy to fix. I'll grind the whole thing a bit further yet, but for now I'll grind the top down flush. And I decided that it was about time I put a new belt on and what a difference that made. It needs a touch more sanding yet, but one last thing I need to do is add an indent for your thumb to catch the lid. I did a bit of sanding, mainly on the corners as they were pretty sharp, but as I always say when working with brass, I won't go too far with the finishing as I like the brass when the patina builds up on it. The hinge isn't perfect, but I am happy with it and it's something to improve on in the future. You can see here there's a slight gap between the barrel pieces. Anyway, it was a great learning project. I got to use the Miller machine and the lathe and work with a bit more accuracy than I usually do. I may come back to it later on and engrave or etch it. Tell me what you would do with it or whether you'd leave it as it is and what you reckon I should use it for. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.